Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the PEMCO number 4131 SNPKL. This is a satin nickel anodized aluminum automatic door bottom with a PEMCO preen insert. This item can be used in both a surface mount and a semi mortise mount. It is a very common automatic door bottom. That's what this is. Now, let's talk about it. What is an automatic door bottom? Well, an automatic door bottom is, is exactly the way, uh, or it is what the name implies. It is, a, it is a, uh, an item that seals the bottom of the door, and it does so automatically. Now, how it goes about accomplishing that is, take note that this end has this bolt sticking out of it. That's called a plunger, or at least I'll refer to it as the plunger. And the other side does not have that at all. Okay, so that plunger is crucial in the proper operation of the door unit. This is uh, threaded and is connected to a flat spring or a series of flat springs inside of the automatic door bottom. And what we'll do is we'll rotate that out because it's threaded. As you turn it counterclockwise, it will project out further from the end of the, case, uh, end of the uh, automatic door bottom. As you turn it clockwise, it'll thread back inside. Well, how automatic door bottoms work is this plunger, which is connected to the inner linkage, as mentioned earlier. When it comes in contact with the frame, it compresses those uh, flat springs that are in there, or flat spring, and forces the bottom to drop. And it does so automatically every single time. That's an elegant sort of solution to sealing the bottom of, of the door because, well, the seal material is tucked up into the housing when the door is open, meaning when that plunger is projected out. But when it's compressed, it then drops down. And the compressing happens only in really the last few degrees of the closing cycle of the door. So let's test that. So as the door closes, and this comes in contact with what would be either the stop of the frame or the rabbit of the frame, we'll talk more about that in a moment, that has nowhere to go but in the housing. And as it does, it compresses the flat spring that is in there and forces the bottom to drop. Now it's very normal for the bottom to drop in this uneven sort of fashion. But I'll use my thumb to represent the sill and when it makes contact with the sill what you'll see is the rest of it will drop evenly. So what this unit does is drops down and then knifes over. That's very advantageous in terms of a solution for an automatic door bottom because it will help contour itself to a sill that's not level or a door that's not exactly plumb. Not all, most sills aren't exactly level and most doors aren't exactly plumb. A door sweep has a small amount, a traditional door sweep has a small amount of ability to tailor itself to that sort of condition. Whereas an automatic door bottom has a much greater ability because of how it can drop down and then knife over. Okay, Maximum drop on this unit is three quarters of an inch. Uh, basically zero to three quarter inch. So if you have an undercut that is uh, greater than three quarter inch, we'd have to talk about a different model of, uh, of automatic door bottom. But three quarter inch encompasses almost all typical scenarios. And, three, and, and the undercut is defined as the bottom of the door to the top of the sill. You know, whatever you're sealing on top of, which could be a threshold, um, you know, whatever sill nosing, whatever, whatever you might happen to have. As long as that dimension is three quarter inch or less, this is a great solution. Now automatic door bottoms, because of their nature, are great elegant solutions because they seal only when the door is closed. They're just making contact with the top of the sill, no dragging, so you're not prematurely wearing out whatever your material is. They are uh, also handy because you might have a different uh, floor elevation on, on either side of the door, meaning you could have an exterior door in the home and it has it's sitting on a limestone sill. You might have a threshold there or whatever the case is, but the truth is you have to transition up to hardwood floor, let's say, on the inside of the house. So the distance underneath the door to the sill is very different than the, when, uh, when the door is closed than when the door is open from the bottom of the door to the uh, hardwood floor. That'd be a great example of where an automatic door bottom comes into play. That same scenario, let's say you even have an even floor or something much more even, 
an automatic door bottom, since it isn't hanging off the bottom of the door, allows you to get over, let's say, a rug that's in front of the door or kids' shoes that get left in front of the door. You're not dragging your sweep over that material. Automatic door bottoms, very, uh, you know, uh, appropriate for that solution. Another solution, if you have a commercial application and your door swings out, uh, you might have, in the summer, perfect operation. But in the winter, the concrete pad out behind your door rises a little bit. Now your door scrapes against the concrete pad. Uh, an automatic door bottom will allow you to seal the bottom of the door without causing a problem of that floor that's now a little bit higher than it was uh, during the summer months. So elegant solutions uh, or reasons to use this. Now this I had mentioned earlier is a surface mount or a semi mortise. What that means is you can this model is intended to be surface mounted to the door and as a result, must be mounted on the push side of the door only. Whether that's inside or outside, doesn't matter. It's always on the side that you push the door away from you. Whether it's surface mounted or mortised is really the same application, except that what will change in those two instances is how long of an item you need to order. Before we get into the length, and then therefore the installation instructions, let's finish off the summary of the item. It's an automatic door bottom. The 4131 is representative of the surface mount or semi-mortise style. The SN means satin nickel, and that is what PEMCO satin nickel looks like. The PKL represents this PEMCO preen material. It's a proprietary, proprietary sort of uh, silicone material for, by PEMCO. Very effective sort of item to help seal the bottom of the door. Again, three-quarter inch maximum undercut. It's fire rated. Okay, It is going to be incredibly effective at... Uh, sealing the bottom of the door for the transmission of air as well, and even some sound. Uh, can be more mount, mounted to either wood or metal doors, or fiberglass for that matter, or aluminum for that matter. Uh, features a smoother positive action seal mechanism. Uh, that's a reference to how this material actually works with its uh, ability to telescope out a little bit and then also be compressed a little bit. Okay, That compressing is... Uh, nice because it will, you know, take full advantage of the width of the material uh, and give you very good surface area. These little fingers that are on the bottom of it are also good to help contour itself to a slightly irregular surface. Maybe the flutes on the top of the threshold. Um, these are non-handed, although. Although we ask for the hand uh, of the item when you're ordering it. <coughs> now, forgive me. It is beyond my ability to explain, but there are times when PEMCO, uh, upon receipt of an order, has said, what is the hand of the unit? And I tell them, the unit can be flipped around. It's not handed whatsoever. Um, and then they will still, still insist to know the hand. So we just, as a result of having gone through that several times, just ask for the hand. There's a chart below this video showing the four different ways that doors can swing, left hand, right hand, if they're in swing, left hand reverse or right hand reverse if they're out swing. So use that chart to help you determine the hand of the unit. And by all means, reach out to us to discuss that at length. Okay, now we were talking earlier about what is the actual size of this item to order. Now that is going to be First, by knowing if it's, an ins um, part if it's a surface mount or a semi-mortise mount. Now, surface mount is by far the most common. And because this is a automatic door bottom and therefore most likely surface mounted, installed therefore on the push side, push side, because the plunger, this end, again different than the other end, this end is defined as the hinge side of the door. This plunger side always gets installed on the hinge side of the door, and therefore the end without the plunger will always get installed on the opposite side of the door, the lock side. Now, when you are standing to measure the size that you need, when you are standing on the push side of the door, let's say the door is closed, you'll measure the distance between the stops because that's the area within which you have to work. And then you will take that dimension and you will deduct an eighth of an inch from that dimension, and that's your order size. Here's an example. You have a 36 inch, you have a three foot wide hollow metal door. 
That door is probably 35 and 3 quarter. Doesn't have to be, but it probably is. The truth is, the net size of the door does not matter because what you're working with is the distance between the stops. But in this scenario, it's typical for a three foot door to be 35 and 3 quarter. It's typical for that hollow metal frame to have a stop projection of 5 eighths on each side. So you're going to have a nominal inside frame width of 36 inch, less 5 eighths, less 5 eighths, leaves you at 35, uh, pardon me, 34 and 3 quarter inch. Deduct an eighth, you've got 34 and 5 eighths. That would be an appropriate size to order this net. So I suggest that, well, actually, we'll get to that next comment in a moment. That uh, example is based on surface mounting it. Now, if you're going to semi-mortise it, meaning you are going to take this unit and you're going to mortise the bottom of the door so that it's flush with the frame, which would be a very elegant way to install this, uh, you're going to need to order this, basically the net door width, as measured on the small side of the door if it's a beveled wood door, uh, uh, and order it that size because now it doesn't operate between the stops. It is now attached to the face of the door and it will occupy the space in front of the stop face is what it will do. It will become part of the door. Now if you have a fire rated door, don't do that. Don't, mort don't semi mortise it uh, because you would be uh, in, you would void the label on the fire rated assembly by actually taking a router and morticing that much out of the door uh, which is leads me to the dimensional properties. I've got one in 27 30 seconds, so basically one in 15 16 one in 7 eighths, I should say. Thickness of the item is about 5 eighths. They've got it at 1930 seconds. So it would be to this size that you're going to mortise the bottom of the door. Again, uh, if it's not fire rated. If it is fire rated, assuming you haven't ordered the door, simply uh, provide that model number and template to your door supplier and they will properly reinforce the structure of the door with the proper internal material for a fire rated assembly and then do the mortising to the bottom of the door so that you're in compliance with the label of the door. Um, the net size that you order the unit is based on how you're mounting it. So I suggest that you determine your method of mounting, you determine the net size and you order it to that proper size. The reasoning is this. This is a 36 inch piece. Well, there's not really any examples that I can think of. Well, that's not true. If you had a, uh, a solid core wood door and a wood frame, it's possible that a three foot door is, the door is actually 36 inch. This would be perfect if you were gonna semi mortise it onto a, thir a, full, a full and square 36 inch door, or at least a full width door. But Pemco is manufacturing these items out of very long extrusions. Okay, all the pieces and parts are made from lengths. 36 inches is actually somewhat of a random dimension. So if you have the ability to check the job site, get the actual dimensions, let the manufacturer cut them down. The reasoning is because if you have a unit that is 26 inch or wider, you can only trim it down by 2 inch. Okay, that's usually going to work. But if you had a 3 foot oh, a unit that you ordered and it turns out your door is 2 foot 8, you have a problem. Um, if it's a 24 inch model or, the, or smaller, which if you had a pair of two foot French doors, uh, sort of a patio door for a residential application, uh, you could not cut this down any more than half of an inch. This pin that is here is evidence of where the internal mechanisms uh, occupy. So with this model, they say two inch, and that's pretty accurate to what you're going to have to work with. Now, another advantage of having the manufacturer cut the material down is you don't run the risk of damaging any of these moving parts that are in here, okay? You don't run the risk of, uh, you know, assuming all the responsibility for getting it right. Uh, a net size to Pemco is no different than a nominal size to them. Uh, they're cutting it anyway. I'm a fan of it. You may not be able to get to the job site. It might be 100 miles away. Uh, but you know it's a three-foot door. Well, then in that case, you're going to cut the item down in the field. And you're going to very carefully, uh, you're going to make sure that your drop bar over here is flush with the housing. That does have a little bit of float in it because it's, it, because these bottoms, they don't drop straight down. They actually move this way a little bit, so they float a little bit inside there. But you're going to want to be real careful, uh, real uh, cognizant of what you're doing, and trim that material. Uh, you might want to pull that back, the, the Premco preen, when you're uh, 
cutting it so that you can insert it back through and then trim it after the installation. Now once you've got the net size determined uh, or the method of mounting, you're going to mount this to the door. You're going to um, unhang the door, certainly if it's a semi-mortise. Uh, if it's a surface mount, you don't have to unhang your door at all. But uh, at this point, let's jump to the installation instructions that are linked below this video. Step one is determine if the application is semi-mortised or uh, surface mounted. Then you determine your net size. We've got that. Step three is you'll cut the item if you've not already ordered it to the exact size that you need. Uh, the warnings there about how much you can trim are in step three. Step four, adjust the trim and gasketing insert so that it projects at least a sixteenth at each end from the drop bar in case. You're going to leave this hang long, okay, and, uh, until you've got it attached to the door and you can then judge exactly where it needs to be because you want this to fill that small eighth of an inch gap or three thirty seconds of an inch gap between the jam and the end of the door. Okay, you'll leave that hang long until the proper time. Now, at this point, once you have it installed to the door, take a screwdriver and turn that clockwise and turn it in almost all the way in. Remember, the amount of projection of the plunger is directly related to the drop, so you don't want it to drop a significant amount in your first initial test. So as you turn that plunger in, test your door. Get down on the floor and look and see where your sill is coming in, and then proceed to adjust. Maybe give it a couple of revolutions, test it again. The crucial thing is, you don't want this item to have undue pressure pushing this down against the sill because as soon as the pressure is released from the drop bar, it starts to come back up. You want, as soon as the door begins to open, the pressure to be relieved from those flat springs and the drop, and the drop bar to come back up into the housing. You don't want there to be pressure where you're dragging the drop bar housing against the floor. Uh, it will damage the item, uh, probably permanently. Uh, you'll get it fastened, step six. The actuation plunger should be is only located on the hinge side of the door. The bottom of the automatic door uh, bottom case should be installed flush with the bottom of the door. Okay. Yes, your seal will, will project down a little bit, but the bottom of the aluminum case they want flush. If you have a wood frame, you're going to use this tiny little screw. That is to be located precisely where the plunger makes contact with the wood frame, if it's the stop or if it's the rabbit of the frame itself, so that over time you don't create a divot in the uh, wood frame. Okay. Uh, fasteners are included to get it attached to the door. End caps are included. You can get the picture of which side goes on the hinge. That's the opposite side. Screws will be included for you to get those attached. And you'll take note of the feature to the right here, feature to the uh, inner extrusion here and here, where those screws will go and get screwed right into, is where that is going to be installed onto. Those little plates finish off the installation. And that, include, that concludes showing you all the individual pieces. You would, your, your door bottom is probably going to have this warning decal on the plunger. You never cut from the hinge side. You never cut from the hinge side always from the lock side. Um, adjustment is from an eighth of an inch to three quarter inch. Max drop. Start with the plunger screwed in. Begin to test. Do not over adjust the plunger. It is necessary to, to lightly compress the insert against the seal. Over adjustment may cause internal component failure, voiding the warranty. Do not use a power tool when doing this. You don't want your drill to get away from you and just turn that until it falls apart. Okay. Um, and that concludes really the overall discussion of automatic door bottoms. I do find that they're, I do feel that they're elegant. They do the job for you. They do it in such a way that is smart and they do it in such a way that is very long lasting. Okay. If there's one thing to mention about it, about automatic door bottoms, if I've sold 10,000 of these or more, for every 10,000 I'll have a person say, boy, I can hear that clanking sound as the door is open. To me, it's not an issue. It is a not. It is. It it doesn't exist. But I mention it only because it's been mentioned to me, and I'm therefore aware of it. Um, Pepco has some models that will significantly deaden that sound. Uh, you know, by just being a different type that will have a a, a, a a neoprene bushing between those two areas that are making contact. Okay. So reach out to us if you need some help determining a different model or 
click the link below this video to the manufacturer page where you can pull up the Pemco catalog and then get into all of their automatic door bottoms. I'm partial to, to Pemco because of their comprehensive offering of automatic door bottoms. Light duty, medium duty like this, heavier duty material, material for specific purposes like lead lined doors, like acoustically rated doors, okay? Uh, security style, where they'll have a large aluminum bar down here to prevent someone from getting something underneath, uh, you know, like maybe a tool to defeat the lock set. Uh, you know, they'll have that sort of item. Not only automatic door bottoms, so thresholds, perimeter gasketing, material made of aluminum, stainless steel, architectural bronze. If you have any questions on the Pemco 4131, SN PKL satin nickel anodized automatic door bottom with a Pemco preen insert or any other Pemco product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.